Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Late Drop presented by Future Fins. I've been riding Future Fins for 20 years now, and they're all I trust when I surf big waves, along with all the best big wave riders in the world. So please support Future Fins because they support us. Today on the podcast, I have none other than KK Kiala Canley, a trailblazer for women's surfing, um, a, a lady that got so close to winning a world title um, and finishing heartbreak, finishing second. Uh, she's been a Hollywood actress. She's a DJ. She's a uh, big wave world champion and um, just an all round really cool chick. So I hope you enjoy the episode. That, I just thought, oh, man, I literally just almost died. This day just had that feel like every wave coming in was the wave of the day. It was like a glass ceiling that was just shattered. And the next thing it was like 10 levels up. Like this is the experience I've been waiting my whole life for. So I want to go back to the start for KK. I know you grew up in Kauai. Um, you know, what, what was it like? I mean, growing up in Kauai, I know that obviously, you know, there's, there's, surfing is a huge part of the whole culture there. But, you know, as, as a young girl growing up in Kauai, um, what was it like? Well, I grew up um, like Hanalei side of Kauai. Um, and I grew up like there was just mostly just like boys in my neighborhood. Like I didn't know any girls growing up. Um, my neighborhood had like Andy and Bruce Irons live down the street, you know, um, like my, my peers were like, yeah, like Andy and Bruce, Kamala Alexander, Reef McIntosh, like all these like guys that became, you know, famous surfers. So yeah, these were, these were like the guys I hung out with. And I just, I was a total tomboy. Um, kind of uh, still am. <laughs> but <laughs> no, no change. Um, but yeah, I just, I just, I love sports. I loved, you know, whatever the boys were doing, that's what I wanted to do. Whether it was like skateboarding, BMX, and then like we found surfing and like that was it, you know? Mm. Um, but it was, it was tough because I was the only girl and, you know, they were definitely like, they were really hard on each other, you know, like, like kids, kids were just tough on each other, but they were especially tough on me because I was a girl. And then especially when I started competing against them, because when I, when I started wanting to do, when I got good enough where I, I, I wanted to start doing competitions, when want to start entering the local competitions, they didn't, there wasn't enough girls to have like a, a, a girls division. So they had, you know, Menahuni 12 and under boys. And then they had like open women. So it was like, I could either surf against kids my age that were boys or like, you know, 30 year old women. I did both, but I, I enjoyed surfing against the boys more. I felt like it was more challenging and, um, they did not like it. No, I can imagine. No. I mean, and yeah. it's, 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 I mean, when I look at, you know, your career and, and everything you've done and, and how you go about it, I mean, I, you've got to think that, you know, that, that how that played out, you know, like you say, if you're in Oahu, there's probably plenty of girls, right? Like yep. more enough, maybe you could have a division and you surf against the girls and maybe you go and win every contest and it's, it's easy for you. But, but, you know, growing up surfing against Andy and Bruce and all those guys and having a male like against the guys, like you, you got, I'm sure you got tough real fast. You know, you had thick really skin tough, real fast. and it's like, yeah. and I can see that that is how, that's had a massive influence on where, where, how you've got to where you got today, for sure. You know, having to having to go that route instead of like, you know, maybe going the other route has actually maybe in the in the moment it didn't feel so great, but like now you look back and go, wow, I'm, I'm grateful to be able to have gone that route. It, it made me who I am today. Oh, absolutely shaped my character. I mean, I was like raised by like savage wolves, and it you know turned me into a little it turned me into a little warrior you know um like andy and bruce would pretty much win everything you know they'd usually get like first and second but i'd be like th third fourth fifth you know and i'd beat some of the other guys i i beat andy and bruce maybe once or twice uh andy wouldn't speak to me for like a month um <laughs> but like the other guys you know they um i i would beat them more consistently you know i'd get like fourth fifth in there and they were just so mean like just cuss me out, call, call me so many names and just, you know, but yeah. And, and the it moment ever, it was. Yeah. Sorry. Did it, did it ever start to deter you? And did you think, oh man, I'm not, 
into this? Like I don't like, or, or did it sort of go the other way where I was just like, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to do this more and more and I'm, I'm going to like dig, dig my heels in and, and just keep doing this. I think I just bottled it up. You know, I, I bottled up all that kind of anger and hurt. And I think that, um, I think I just found a way to use it, you know, especially when it came to like charging bigger waves. It was just like, I had all this like anger and, and kind of hurt that I'd bottled up, you know, from, from childhood. And, and yeah, I feel like when you needed that extra little push, you know, to, to, to throw yourself over the ledge, you just had that like, Argh. yeah. Cause you, um, I mean, you, uh, I, I forgot your brother's name, but I surf we surf, I surf in that jaws. I mean, you had a, a surfing family, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. No, my, my, both my parents surf, uh, Gavin, right? Gavin. Yeah. Gavin, Gavin. charges. Yeah. yeah no, he charges. I, 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 I had a great conversation without him at, at a Jaws one day. He was just chatting away, and I didn't know it was your brother, and we were wrapping it out, and he's a good guy. Oh, he's a great he's a great guy. Great guy and really great server. He wanted to be a pro surfer like me, and he just kept having knee issues. Um, he just had knee surgery like a week ago again, poor thing. But um, he, lo- he loves surfing, and he's a, he's a fire captain in Kauai, so he, you know, he found a profession where he – you know, 24 on, 24 off, he gets to surf a lot. You know, he saves up his vacation time and, you know, he'll go be a boat boy in Fiji for the summer or, you know, he'll save up his vacation time so he can, he can surf a lot, chase well. Yeah, he get, and he gets his, he probably gets his adrenaline too from, you know, going in and saving people's lives as well. It's yeah, a, it's a, yeah it's absolutely. An, it's an incredible job. I think that if, if I had to do things a different way, I think I would, I think I would like to be a fireman too. I think that's a, that's a pretty, I thought about it. I thought about it for sure. When I, you know, went through tough times, lost all my sponsors and was trying to figure out what, what am I going to do? I think I, I definitely looked at firefighter. I looked at cop. I passed, I actually passed the the test to be HPD, which only like 10%, only 10% of people that take that test actually pass it. So, um, and then, and then, you know, I found out basic training was like going to be waking up at 4 a.m. and driving out to Waipahu and getting sprayed with pepper spray in the face for eight weeks. And, you know, <laughs> this was like when I was in, I'd had a really bad knee injury. Um, and I was thinking like my career might be over, you know, what am I going to do? I got my real estate license and I, I took the test to be a cop. And then kind of like after I passed the test and was going to go into basic training, my knee started to get better to where I could surf again. And it was like, ah, nah, I'm going to I'm gonna go on a surf trip instead. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, yeah, I think you, you, you chose the right path and, and kept with it. And that, you know, just goes to show from that, you, ch- you know, there's a little fighting with Andy and Bruce, you, you know, you, you're able to stick with it and continue the path and, and yeah. look where you are now. So yeah, it was hard. Uh, it was hard sometimes to keep on that path. You know, I just knew this was my path. I knew I had to keep going, you know. Um, yeah, there was times where it was just hard, and I'm just like, "What am I doing?" And, you know, I'm putting everything on credit cards, you know, flights to chase swells, just getting buried in in credit card debt, you know. Yeah, like like a lot of big wave surfers, unfortunately, is uh, it's it's sort of it's uh, to me it's the the most incredible form of surfing and the uh, most spectacular, but it's just. Uh, not much support out there for us, you know, which is which is a bummer. But um, what um, I remember this that when you gave your world title speech in Australia and you said, you know, how many people I'm I'm gonna probably butcher it, but you're like, how many people knew what you wanted to do when you were a kid? And you're like, oh, I did. I wanted to be a world champion. And um, mm-hmm. I thought that was such a such a cool um, you know, a cool speech. And when when was that? When when you know, you talked about growing up with Bruce and Andy, you start to do the Manahuni contests. And when is it does, that it clicks in your mind that you're like, you know what, like I, I, I'm pretty good at this. Like I want to go and do this. I want to be a world champion. Like when was that? We were little. I mean, we found surfing and it just, we were just all about it. Like everything else fell away. Like we played, we played soccer on the same teams, me and Andy and Bruce. And yeah, like I said, we ride BMX bikes and skate. But as soon as we found surfing, it was just like, okay, this is it. Like, don't even want to do those other sports anymore. And, you know, it's funny because back then you didn't, you didn't even know if like surfing could be a career, you know, it's not like today where you have like the internet and the WSL and like live webcasts and it's so, you know, accessible. And back then it was like, 
the only way you knew that there was like contests, CT contests going on is you got a surfer magazine and then like way in the back of the magazine, they, they, they post like the results of like the CT events on tour, you know? Um, but otherwise like you wouldn't know there was no internet. You couldn't, you couldn't look this stuff up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause you started, you turned pro right at, um, 17, if, if I'm correct. Yeah. 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 What, and you got, yeah. uh, cause you, I think that year was, uh, you finished second on the, the Q, the WQS back then. That, yeah. yeah. The WQS. Yeah. I was winning the QS the whole year. And then I did, I had an ankle injury last contest, so I didn't, didn't get a good result in that one, but still finished second in the world. So that was good. Qualified. Qualified. What was that like at, at 17 to be able to, you know, chase your dreams at 17 years old? Cause back then, I mean, there was a, there was a, uh, a lot of events for, for the girls was it the same as the men or how, how did it work back then? Like, did you guys do the same sort of tour or you sort of, it was separated back then? No, no, no. It was completely the same. I think Coca-Cola was, uh, the umbrella sponsor, you know? And, um, yeah, there was a lot of events, uh, always men's and women's events, you know? Um, it, it was great. It was great. I mean, the prize money was, was crap. Uh, yeah. for the, the prize money for the women was horrible. And then um, just the the way that women were treated like second class citizens was horrible. Kind of the way, uh, just the attitude towards the women back then uh, on tour was like the sentiment was kind of like from the, from the, from the other male athletes was kind of like, you guys should just be like grateful that you're here. Like you, sh you should be like happy with our scraps, you know, you like, you should be happy with whatever, whatever crap prize money you get and whatever shit conditions you get. Cause it was really, it was really like blatantly like, okay, the way, you know, the waves turned on shore and, and it's high tide and, and, and the conditions went to, went to crap, bring the, bring the guys in, send, send the chicks out. I mean, it was just like, yeah, bla blatantly, um, they blatantly treated us like second class citizens. And, and the attitude was kind of like, Oh, you should, you should be happy for what, you, you know, you should be just lucky to be here on our, like, this yeah. is our tour. You should just be lucky to even be a part of this, you know? Yeah. You guys are just scrap, scrapping for, for scrap, scraps. Crumbs. It's, yeah. Just cr yeah. Here's some crumbs. Amazing, here's to some crumbs. Now. amazing to see now, like, especially on the CT that the, uh, that's all changed and the, uh, and the level of women surfing to, to, uh, to where like you, I mean, I'm more, I'm, I'm just as excited now to watch the girls surf as the men's and that wasn't the case you know back back in the day but for me even personally it's like there's such the, the level of women surfing has just gone so far through the roof that uh you know from f the first heats to the finals now it's uh and there's so many that can win you know like i think back in the day it was there was a really a, top, a couple yeah a top tier you know and they're always there so it was sort of like well i can just watch the final because i know lane beach is going to be surfing against <laughs> Pauline right. Menza or right. something, you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, something yeah. crazy like that. But now, you know, on a good day, like Steph or Carissa or someone, if they have a, a, a bad day, they can be knocked out in the third round or whatever it oh, is. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. You know, probably so helped so, probably help that you had a couple daughters that, you know, that put put more focus on women and women's sports for you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, 100%. You know, like it's, yeah. uh, it's, it's all growth, right? It's... Uh, growth and you know seeing seeing the growth of everything it's um it's exciting exci exciting times you know so what was it I like find, um sorry no i say i find that uh, you know a lot of times like men male athletes they, they don't even realize how how bad it is for women until they have like daughters of their own and then they see like oh my god my my little girl is going out into this world that you know, it is a man's world and they're not going to have the same opportunities. And like, you know, this is my little girl and I want, I want her to, you know, do whatever she wants in her life, you know? Yeah. So oh, yeah, it's a hundred percent, you know, you just hope that you hope that they, um, you know, have a good work ethic and they, you know, and they, if they, and if they're good at something and they put the effort and time in that they get the same opportunities, that's all you yeah. can ask for, you know? And yeah. as a dad, you know, like for me, it's just like, I, that's that's what I want to teach them. You know, it's just like, hey guys, like you can, you can have the world. You know, it's not going to be given to you, but you, if you work hard and, and you're you're good at it, then 
hopefully you will have the same opportunities, you know, and, and that's, and opportunity, you know, but the opportunities haven't always been there and they haven't. No, been no, before, exactly. You know? No. And, and we've that's, had to that's, fight. We've had to fight tooth and nail uh, for yep. the opportunities we get. I don't know if you, you know this, but like they have the women's events now back in Hawaii on the North shore. Yeah. The they're, triple crown. Yeah. They're getting the triple crown back. So when I started competing uh, in pro events, uh, some of my first pro events, I'd fly over from Kauai and I would surf in the Triple Crown of Surfing because they had women's events uh, alongside the men in Haleiwa, uh, Sunset Beach. And then I think the men had Pipe and the women had um, Honolulu. And then when I kind of left the tour and then started doing more of the big wave stuff and chasing big swells and, you know, towing it and doing all kind of pioneering that that for the women. And I wasn't focused on the the competition circuit anymore but i still lived in hawaii and i still like go surf the north shore every winter i started to notice like wait the triple crown of surfing's on but wh where's the women like where's the women's heats i don't see any women's heats i don't see any of the women athletes walking around like what's going on and i realized you know i look i kind of looked things up and they hadn't had women in the triple crown of surfing for over a decade and i was just like this is bullshit, you know? Yeah. So I actually, I went to um, myself, Betty DiPolito, a couple other people went to, um, went to the city and county and had to go, had to go through all these hearings uh, with our, with our city and county officials and actually write up like a resolution to um, change the permitting system so that when contest organizers pull a permit, uh, to run an event on the North Shore in the wintertime that they would have to then include a, a women's along with the men's because if you don't force them to do that, they will just exclude the women forever, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it so seems like was... there's been like little bits and pieces, right, where there's been an expression session, like a backdoor here and there. And yeah. But as like, I remember when I, you know, in the early 2000s, when I first started doing my first full season that, yeah, it was, you know, there was that the women were surfing Big Sunset and, there was, there was the triple crown, you know, but then I think, yeah, they sent you guys to Maui. You had your own standalone event there. And then that sort but, of, but North shore, North shore, wintertime, North shore, not a single pro event for women for the last decade. Yeah. Crazy. Right. North shore is the like Mecca of surfing. Yeah. The women have been completely excluded from comp pro competitions there for over a decade. Yeah. Well, it will be, it will be good to see the girls. Uh, Cause I think last year they had, um, didn't they have a, I mean, you've been involved. Did they still invite you to some of the, um, pipe and backdoor, the expedi ex like exp they, ones that, they expedition ones they have? Or? Expression, expression sessions. Yeah, they, haven't expression session. invite, they haven't invited me in quite a few years. I think the last one I got invited to was, uh, like 2016 maybe. Yeah. So it's been a while. It's been a while, but, um. Yeah. Cause I think Tyler, maybe they had one last year. And I think either, uh, Tyler and Carissa went head to head, but I mean, no, Chris was getting, killing I mean, it. Chris was crushing like getting it. Full barreled, like full, yeah. like just, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. That, that's it's, it. like, it's like people's, skill levels you know, there. The skill levels there. And, you know, people like will criticize and kind of heckle and just be like, oh, you know, girls can't handle and, oh, they, you know, you shouldn't give them a pipe contest. They can't serve pipe. And it's like, I find that when women are, women athletes are given the opportunities, they rise to the occasion. They're just never given the opportunities, you know? that women are never going to go surf pipe on their own. You know, I am because I, I like I like that challenge. That's like, you know, what what gets my juices flowing. But but for like a your standard uh, WCT competitor, they're, they're not going to go surf pipe. They never have to surf a wave like that in competition. So why are they going to go free surf out there with the 80 best guys in the world? You know, yeah. super, super aggressive, never going to get a wave like they'd rather go surf, you know, Pupakea, Haleiwa, Rocky Point. Yeah, Sunset. Know, sunset, wherever. Yeah. yeah. So it's just like they're never given an opportunity. Whereas like for for boys, you know, the juniors come up, they have junior pros at pipe where they clear the water. And these, these juniors that are like 12, 13, 14 years old that aren't, you know, used to surfing pipe yet and they're intimidated, but they're given the opportunity, right? Yeah. The water gets cleared. There's three, four of them out there. They're actually, they're able to get waves without, you know, being hassled, being in a crowd of like the best guys in the world. And they're able to get waves and start to get comfortable. You know, the women just yeah. aren't given that their women aren't, aren't given that opportunity. So it's like yeah. when the opportunities are there, they're going to rise to the occasion. 
Yeah. Well, I think you're a perfect example, KK, and I think a lot of people have uh, you know, taken sort of your success and your drive to do that and um, you know, and, and followed in your footsteps. You know, you, you definitely I – mean, and we'll get into a lot of the stuff that you've done later, but you've definitely paved the way um, for a lot of women's, you know, surfing, big wave surfing especially, and uh, they're following in your footsteps. And, you know, going just going back to the, to the tour, I mean – you won. Talk about heavy waves. I think you won the the Chopes contest. Like, was it four times? Four times, yeah. Yeah, two thousand ninety eight, two thousand, two thousand and two, two thousand and three. If I'm not mistaken, and uh, yep. and then you had, your, I think your breakout year, like as in on tour, was in two thousand and three as well, where you won the. Um, you were in, PG, I think you were even cover. in number one, right? You were in the number one spot for a while, but you the whole, ended up, uh, the whole way to the last contest, the last heat. I was in the number yeah, one. Yeah, and, and you won the. Yeah. You end up second, but you also that year you won the Roxy Pro in Fiji, and then mm-hmm. finally enough, I'd forgotten about this, but the Turtle Bay Pro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not somewhere you'd expect me, uh, KK to win at all. No, yeah. backhand, yeah. two foot. Weird, just fat, shifty, smushy. weird wave. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how I pulled that one off, but um, yeah. The trophy Dude, was. I mean, awesome. that's huge. I mean, I, I, when I was re- going back and researching, man, I'm like, oh, I was like, wow. Like, I'd even forgot. I'm like, you know, you were nearly a, a double world champ, like a world champ in you know, CT came, and big wave. That's crazy. I came so close, and it, I, I, it kind of all fell apart for me in, in France. I was so far ahead. I was in first by a mile. I could have, I could have like sewn it up in France and, and won the world title there. And then we got, I got over to France. There was, it was like a mobile event. So they had, it was like Hasegor, Caberton. There was like three different spots that they could have ran the event. We just, the, the conditions were bad. It was very stormy. They kept canceling, postponing, postponing. They got to the end of the, the holding period and they were running out of time. And so they decided to move the event down to um this other spot way in the south that i'd never surfed before and i had the wild card and it was like her home break oh you know, wow. with, with her with her home crowd cheering and i you know i still felt like i i edged her out in that heat but i lost by like half a point and you know first round so yeah. my it just pulled my ranking down Confidence. uh no the, my ranking oh, it yeah. pulled my ranking down because i had to count um i had to count a throwaway because of that, you know? So then I went into, I went into Maui, the last event, you know, just barely ahead of, of lane to where like, if we'd have tied, if we'd have both got third, cause I think I finished third and then she made it the finals and got second. If we'd have both got third and tied, I still would have won the world title. I mean, because you'd won more events. I'd won more events. She didn't win a single event that year. Wow. Just really yeah. consistent. That was her thing, man. Consistency. You know, yeah. she was just a contest machine. Like she's an amazing surfer, but like the talent that was on tour at the time, it just is mind blowing to me that she won as many world titles as she did. Because I mean, you had like, you know, like Rochelle, Chelsea Jorison, um, Melly Bartels, who was just yeah. such a ripping, prog- amazing and progressive surfer. Like there was just a lot of exciting surfing going on yeah. on tour. Well, I feel like Chelsea Jorgensen at that time when she came out, I like, and she was just before Steph, I think, but I, cause I remember yep. I, was, I worked, I always worked the water patrol at the Quicksilver Pro at Snapper. So it was the first event of the year, you know, and, and when she sort of hit, hit that with her backhand, like, I mean, she was just so ra- radical surfing on a backhand. She was ahead of yeah. her time nearly. Yeah. No, there was, there was some amazing surfers, uh, during that time. Serena Brooke, another one yeah, ripped. So it just, yeah, like it always blew my mind that that there weren't more, more world titles spread around, but yeah, Lane was just like so consistent. You know, she had, I, I, three, she'd go out, do the three turns, get the score, get through the heat every time. Yeah. I think yeah. another, I think, she, you know, another girl that was probably brought up with the battling with the, the guys and just became super mentally strong and just had that chip on her shoulder and was able to just, just do it, you know, get the job done when she needed to get it done. Yeah, yeah. So was that um, – how long did you – so you started in 97, 2003. That's six years in. So how long were you – how long did you actually um, do the tour for? So 
when I came so close to winning that world title in 2003, and then it's just slipped through my fingers and like at the end, I don't know if I fully ever recovered from that. I was just so devastated by that. Um, you know, I tried to come back like just with a lot of anger and fury the next year and, and, and just, yeah. And for kind of, just, yeah, just my, like competitively just, just never had the fire again. I was just so, um, just kind of jaded and, and, um, and yeah, so, and, and I was, and I was also struggling with some injuries. I had like disc issues in my back. So I was surfing through injuries, you know, surfing with a lot of pain and just not putting my best performances. And then as in the next couple of years, I kind of watched my ranking go from like top three to like top five to like barely top 10. And I was just like, just wasn't in it. Heart wasn't in it. And they kept they started to announce that they were pulling events for the women. They weren't pulling them for the men, but they, they were pulling events for the women. So they, they pulled chopes. And when they pulled chopes, I, that was just like, uh, the, heart, the dagger in the heart yeah. for you, right? That, that's yeah, that spot. was my, that's my spot. You know, I counted on like Tahiti. I counted on Tabarua to be my, my big finishes to kind of equilibrate, you know, when I got to surf, some crappy beach break and I know I'm not going to make it past the first or second round. I'm going to get, I'm going to get beat because yeah. just can't, can't put it together in those waves. But I know when it's, when it's big and pumping, I'm going to, I'm going to be almost unstoppable. So when they started pulling those I, and, and the tour just became beach breaks, I was just like, okay, there's nothing on here for me. You know, I'm, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not ranking the top three anymore. My heart's yeah. not into it. And then, um, then I got offered this, this 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 amazing opportunity to go do acting on an HBO TV series. Yeah, I was going to say that because in 2002, Blue Crush came along, and I was wondering if that was the the transition of like you know acting that and I, uh, the HBO series, what John from Cincinnati, right? John from Cincinnati. So like I was on tour, feeling really frustrated. You know, my heart wasn't into it. All my favorite events were getting pulled, and then this opportunity came out of nowhere and i was just like okay i think that's a sign you know yeah this is something that like is going to pull me off of the tour because otherwise you just stay on tour forever you know because that's yeah, the easiest way to make you money become a, become a creature of habit right you just it's, well, it's your identity and you can't get away from it you can't get away from it and i requalified like the year i i went to do um the hbo tv series i had requalified to surf the tour next year. And everybody's just like, you're requalified. What are you doing? You know, most people retire cause they don't, they don't qualify. So they're like, okay, I'm done. I'd requalified. Uh, and I just gave my spot. I gave away my spot and every, it just was mind blowing to people that I would do that. You know, um, like, what are you doing? This is career suicide. Why are you giving up your spot? And the way I saw it was like, I'm going to go do this acting job. And yes, I could do both. I could technically be, a, be in Hollywood working acting not surfing not training uh and then i'd fly to a, an event probably not do very well or be be working acting and not be able to fly to the event and cancel you know so i was i was I, the way i looked at it was i was gonna be taking the spot of an and athlete someone. that was gonna be surfing training fully into it um so i was able to give my spot uh to rochelle oh so, cool so, so that she got one more year on tour because she was like right on the bubble and, and just hadn't qualified by one. And so she was like next in line. So like I was able to give my spot to like a really good friend. And so I feel like that was that was an awesome. The right the right choice. Do. Yeah. What time? Um, so how did how did the acting? Because I mean, that's a, it's out of the blue, right? Have you had you done acting? Had you like had a manager that was like looking out for that? Or is it just how did how did that come about? So I did Blue Crush. Yeah. And then I think um I think that uh I had been working on my documentary with with this with this woman and she'd been filming me and stuff and then we, you know we kind of like hit a roadblock and stopped. And she just called me out of the blue like I hadn't talked to her in like years and years and um and I just I got this phone call and she's like, "Hey, KK, it's Alex. Like, remember we were doing working on your documentary?" I'm like, "Oh my god, hey, what's up, Alex?" 
She's like, yeah, I don't do documentaries anymore. I'm working、um, on this HBO TV series,、uh, and it's going to have surfing in it. And and you know, the the creators would love to fly you out to and 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 meet with you and、um, kind of pick your brain about surfing. Maybe pay you to be a consultant. And I was like, okay, yeah, cool. So they took me to lunch, and I got to meet、um, the creator David Milch, who was was also the creator of like Deadwood and NYPD Blue. And so I went to lunch with this guy and. He was just so cool and interesting, just like one of the most interesting humans I've ever met to this day. But、um, yeah, he, they just asked me a million questions about surfing, and then、um, and then by the end of lunch, he was like, "Okay, I I, I want to make you a character. You, you you're going to be a character on this." And I was like,、That's、"Oh yeah, cool." You know, he walked me to my car, and I was like, "Yeah, awesome, cool." You know, I, people in Hollywood tell you that all the time, so I just I was just like, "Yeah, sure, sure I'll never hear from them again."、You、yeah.、Know? And then, sure enough, my manager at the time called me up, and he was like,、uh, "HBO just sent me a contract for you to be a season regular、uh, on the, on this new show." And I was just like, "What?" Wow! And like, are you nervous at this point? Like, I mean, is there any acting like history? Any like? like no, how, not how really. Did... Blue, I mean, Blue Crush was it, really? You know, but you、so、sort of. Blue Crush, you're in your element, right? It's the the beach. You're sort、yeah. of playing yourself to it. I was playing that- myself. I was playing myself. Now I'm playing a character that yeah, you know、that's- is is like me, but different, different, different set of life circumstances. You know, different.、Yeah. But you got to learn the、on. lines. You've got to do all that stuff. You、yeah. got to remember it. You like, I mean, that must be nerve wracking. It it was. You know, there was. Yeah, I can remember. I had a scene with Rebecca De Mornay. Wow.、Uh, and she. When I first met her, was she was kind of a bitch to me, <laughs> like, like there was like these um these chairs where the cast was supposed to sit in between scenes, and so like you know cast chairs. Okay, I'm part of the cast, so I went and sat in one of the chairs. And she came up to me, and like I thought she was just gonna like introduce herself, like hi, I'm Rebecca, we have a scene together, whatever. And she came up to me, and she was like, "You're in my chair," and I was just like. <laughs> I just like laughed. I thought she was joking, and she was. I guess she had her purse kind of like draped over the back of it, and I'm like, "Oh, you're serious? Okay." Like I got out of her chair. There was like three three of the same chairs right there.、Yeah. She could have easily just moved her bag, but but yeah. So I had. I mean, we're really good friends now. Um, she she fully warmed up to me, and we became over the course of the show like like good friends. I, like I've celebrated her birthday with her、uh, a few times after the show got canceled and stuff. But、uh, we had a scene together, and this is when、uh, you know we, we still were not on good terms. And、um, yeah. in this scene, I was gonna have to slap her, <laughs> and I was kind of excited about it because I was like, "This is、yeah. awesome! I, I can't, you know, I don't like this chick. She doesn't like me. Like, I came to work like super excited, and when I got to work, I could, I heard her, I overheard her say like, 'I don't want her touching my face.' Wow! And I was just like, 'Uh oh.'" And so we kept trying to do this scene, and I was all nervous. Like I thought she was gonna sue me if I actually like touched her. And so, and and to make matters worse, like you know, I'm looking on Surfline and Pipeline is just like going、nice. off perfect. And I'm just like, I, I think I, I, we just kept like trying to do this scene, and it wasn't happening. And the whole like crew was just getting frustrated. And like you know, we hadn't cut for lunch yet, and you know, just like hours, you know, just time、yeah. was going by, and everybody was getting frustrated. And I just felt like. Everybody's getting frustrated at me, so I remember just sitting in the corner, just like almost in tears. Like, I don't want to be here. Like, I like pipes. I I want to be surfing pipe. Like, what you know? Why am I here in this studio? You know, um. But yeah. How long did um? How long did that go for the jump from Cincinnati? It was like a year. It was、yeah. like a year. Yeah, I moved to LA for a year, and I really did not surf very much. Yeah. You know, and and、um, a good experience. I mean, like looking back now, you're like, um,、oh, you're glad you did it. I mean, did it? Did any did anything else sort of come along from that, or sort of that was that was it, and you just moved on? Yeah. So, uh, awesome experience. No regrets. Really happy I did it. Um, got to meet awesome people. Rebecca De Mornay,、uh, Ed O'Neill. I got to meet Luke Perry. You know, he passed、yeah. away a couple years ago, but he was just the sweetest, sweetest. Human,、um, Brian Van Holt. I'm still friends with him, you know.、Um, so just got to meet really, really cool people. Awesome experience. 
Um, but unfortunately, when the show got canceled, it was kind of right when the economy <clears throat> fell apart in 2007, yeah. 2008. And the writers, the SAG writers went on strike right then. So they went on strike for a year. The writers did not work. So there was no work in Hollywood, even for like the A-list actors, there was no work. So I was yeah. hoping to parlay that into something else and just bad timing. Um, yeah. Cause there was nothing for a year. And after a year was over, it was like, oh, you, you worked on that show like a year ago. Like who cares? Yeah. Yeah. So, what um. So when did you transition into like say you you know you finish the tour you you get this opportunity and then because if you go back again to like in two thousand and five I think was the first time that you're the first woman to tow into chopes um, mm -hmm. way back then but so and you've always had an affinity for like heavy water waves it's, it's like, that's pretty obvious but then is there a moment when you decided that like you were going to take it to the next level or start really chasing swells and was there and if so, when was that? Was that after the acting sort of slowed down or? Yeah. So when, when the, um, when the show got canceled and mind you, like I'd, I'd come out of the closet at this point. Yeah. Um, oh, I how, so came how long, how long did that, so when did that happen? Was that during? That kind of happened on my last, or? no, it kind of happened my last year on, on the tour. On tour. Uh, it started bringing my girlfriend to events and, you know, not. Like, int like introducing her as my girlfriend, not like, oh, this is my friend. Yeah. Uh, BS. And it was just, as I imagined it was going to be, just everybody talking shit, you know, like, like it, I felt like I was in high school and just, it was just yeah. like so brutal. That also helped me transition. I want to leave the tour and go do the acting because I was just like, this is just such a hostile environment. Um, as like an out gay person, like I, I really couldn't handle it. And so when the show got canceled, um, you know, here I am an out gay person that's not on tour. I had this TV show I was doing that was like awesome and like getting me a lot of press. Now that's been canceled. So literally like within three weeks, I lost all of my sponsors. Like I, I lost, I had like Red Bull, I had Spy, Vestal watches. Converse shoes and then Billabong. Billabong actually kept me, but they cut my salary in half. So mm. like it was, it was just shocking, shocking, shocking. Um, and I was like, okay, like, am I should I go back on tour? Should I go back to competing again? And you know, I looked at the the women's tour, and at this point, there was no Chopes, there was no Fiji, there was no Sunset, um, there was just nothing. It, it was it was bad, you know. And I just went, no, I, my heart's not in that you know? Yeah. And so I was just like, I saw that there was a lot of guys that weren't doing the tour, but they were getting paid to like go on trips, surf really good waves just to get shots in the magazine, like pro professional free surfers. And there was yeah, no woman. Because, because you growing, being with Billabong that, I mean, to, when I was Billabong was the, they had so many of those guys and like, it was like, like Rasta Rastovich. was a free surfer. Yeah. 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 Rasta was a free surfer. Dylan Longbottom was a free surfer. Then you had Shano um, stop tour. And then he was chasing ways with, I think, Ian, when Ian was with Billabong back then too, you know, so they, yeah. they all transitioned. I'm sure that probably you probably saw that as well and saw Shane and, and that all just going yeah. to chopes and flying all over the place chasing And swells, I was just like, right? I want to do that. Like yeah. there's no women getting paid to do that. Why can't I be the first woman that gets, that does that? So yeah. I, I convinced Billabong to continue to pay me to, to, to do that. And I would fly to these places, chase swells, you know, and try and get shots for the magazine. But getting a shot in Surfer Magazine as a female, like we never get shots in magazines, you know, it was so, so, so hard. And it's like the guys, they had all their trips organized, you know, they, they, they would be sent with a photographer, you know, everything was just set up for them. And I was just kind of winging it. So didn't get a lot of coverage, but then I noticed when I would go surf a really heavy wave, you know, go really charge, then I would get the coverage. Cause it was like, Whoa, you know, yeah. we've never, was a story. we've never, so it's, we've it's never, never seen, seen this. It. We've never seen this before. You know, I got a wave in Puerto Escondido I think Coco Nogales whipped me into this just freaking huge 
you know, just massive wave. I packed it and the thing just annihilated me. But like the photo was just sick and it got a double page spread in the big issue of Surfer. And I was like, okay, this is all, I'm, I'm on to something here because now I'm getting the coverage. I love doing this, you know, my yeah. heart's into this, my heart's into this, you know, and, 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 and this, this is getting the, me the coverage I need to justify still getting paid, you know, yeah. but my salary got cut every year, even though I started getting the coverage, you know, even though I was producing, you know, for, for Billabong, even though I was breaking ga glass ceilings and, and, you know, doing all these like things a woman's never done, you know, all these like record breaking performances. It was just like every year my salary kept getting cut no matter what. Yeah. And, and the year that I went and got that wave at, at Chopu, that like, that just super bomb that won the barrel of the yep. year when I won, won yep. the men's award. Yeah. Yeah. I was not getting paid a salary from Billabong at that point. Yeah. I was getting a $3,000 a year travel reimbursement budget. So it's like you front the money. And if you get something worthy and you send in your like receipts, we'll, we'll reimburse you up to $3,000. So when I went and chased that swell, that was on my own dime, you know, that was a code that red swell, right? Uh, no, no, that was, oh, it was before two, that. two years, two years after the code red, two years yeah. after I went, I went to the code red. I got some, I got some really good waves on the code red, but smaller waves. Yeah. That was one, that was one of the problems. Um, well, there was many problems <laughs> with trying to tell it Chopu. Every time I, I towed at, at, in Tahiti, you know, I didn't have the resources that, that the guys did, even though I rode for Billabong, like Billabong had skis and stuff in Tahiti for their athletes to use. They just never included me in all that. So it's like the guys, you know, Dylan Longbottom, all these people, you said like, Shano, they all had skis. They all had the resources. And I would literally like, I would literally like take a kayak from my little Tahitian family. I would borrow their kayak. And I would put my tow board and I would kayak out to Chopes. Like that's a really long paddle, you know, yeah. and I'd get out, I'll get out there and I'll tie the kayak off on a buoy and I'd be all suited up, you know, the helmet, tow board, like vest, everything. And I would literally sit in my gear. Trying to hitch many, on your ride. Yeah. For as many hours as it took. And it, it would take like three, four, five hours of just sitting there begging anybody on a ski that goes by can i please just get one can you please just whip me into one you know and um i found when i would do that in the beginning when the guys would come by and whip me into one like i think the billabong guys came and, and grabbed me for one uh during that code red swell but they whipped me into the small one you know it'd be they like probably, okay they probably felt like they're like i don't want to Hurt KK. Be KK. Yeah, I don't want to hurt KK. I don't want to be responsible for killing KK. So let's just whip her into the little one. The problem with that is they whip me into the smaller one. I I would get like these sick barrels. Like I got this one uh, on the code red where I like super deep barrel came out off to the spit, you know, but on a smaller wave. And then I would kick out all pumped and I'd look up huge one. So I would yeah. take it on the, I would, uh, it, you know, it was, it was almost like, more dangerous would, more dangerous because i'd be yeah. in the impact zone just pr like primed ready for the set of the day and to, to just wear it on the head so yeah even though i'd get like amazing waves uh i was getting some of the worst beatings um yeah sorry i lost you for a sec my internet kind of yeah i lost you that's, that's, that's okay i was just gonna say that 2011 was when you um got that way but then a few days later was when I think you had the bad wipeout and it was in the contest and you freaking, I don't know how to say it, but gassed your face open pretty damn no, bad. No, I, I, I tore half my face off, let's be real. Yeah, it was radical. Um, I, I, I remember seeing it and just be like, oh, I was gagging. Like, oh my God, yeah, that's so bad. It was bad. It was really bad. And um, it's funny because everybody thinks that like it happened during Code Red. Mm. And, you know, I had I had guys just like, like even like Eddie Rothman, you know, like you didn't belong out there and like, look at what you did to your face. And like, you shouldn't have been out there on the code red day. And I'm like, well, first of all, nobody should have been out there during the code red day. I don't know how we all survived. That was just like the heaviest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. Like watching Bruce on one of his waves. I was just like, 
oh god, I think Bruce died. And then yeah. like Fle- like Nathan Fletcher's wave, I, yeah. I I felt like I watched somebody get murdered right in front of me. Yeah, you know, like and then that, Bruce, I don't know Bruce how- come flying past with his pants off. Yeah, Bruce got his <laughs> you know board shorts blown off. I mean, it was radical. You know, even like um, Rimana like got scraped really bad that morning. It was just that swell was otherworldly, heavy, like dark. It was yeah. it was dark. It was dark and ominous, and just it was it was it was scary. Yeah, it was know. scary. So no, nobody really belonged out there on that swell, but everybody, you know, was giving me a hard time, like because they thought I did it during the code red, and during I was code like, red. I don't know. I went out and got some sick way, some killer barrels during the code red, and I came in unscathed. Um, yeah. But you know, a, a couple of days later, during Andy's memorial heat in the Billabong Pro, four foot wave did me in. You know, it, it's crazy how it works like that, isn't it? It's you, you just, it's always a small one. It's always a day that you, you think, I don't know if it's you let your guard down or you think that you've just, you come from something like that and you're like, man, I survived that. And then all of a yeah. sudden, like a, a small wave will just tear you to pieces. It's, it's unbelievable how it works like that. Well, Chopu, I mean, it's, you just can never turn your back on that wave. I don't care how, how small it is. But, yeah. You know, two, two foot to 20 foot, it's, it's a monster. Yes. And yeah, I, I always like find some- it's, uh, I was gonna say, I feel like sometimes when it's smaller, there's less water on the reef, right? So maybe I was just, even... I was just gonna say that too. Like when it's when it's smaller and low tide, it's almost more dangerous because you you know it breaks closer into the reef and it's it's just so shallow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's that's crazy. And then, um, 2010, I think was the maybe the the first ever big wave paddle event, and I think that was at Nelscott, right? Yeah. I want to say, right. and, and and you, you were again, there. Huh? Were you there? So, I, I was, I was, I can't remember if I was there. I, I, I think I may have been. It was a weird, like everyone like sort of paddled out and had like weird, like it was like a weird sort of way they ran the contest, right? Yeah. Everyone had, yeah. Everyone had like certain heats or everyone went out and then they just judged it. And I, I'm not sure how it worked out, but again, you end up winning that, right? That was the first ever women's event at, at Nelscott. Well, it's the first ever women's big wave, big wave event contest, period. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, we were so happy to finally have like a women's big wave event, but literally no prize money. I mean, we're flying on our own dime to Oregon. Um, I think they organized like accommodation or something for us, but, yeah. but you know, traveling, surfing, competing, risking your life, no prize money. Yeah. You know, that's, this, this that's, is, it's radical because it's, yeah. uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's really, you know, it's. I applaud you, girls, for keep for just the, for keeping going. You know, especially yeah. you. Like, you. You know, like there's so many times where you could just be like, "I'm done." You know, like yeah. or you're just like, "Ah, it's just not worth it." You know, but but I know how you feel because it's like you love it so much, right? It's like these opportunities come along, and and you and you love that opportunity that you 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 will try and put money on credit card to do it because there is that hope you know there's a there's a hope that if we do this then the next thing is going to be better and then well, maybe I knew, something I knew, will catch I knew on we had to, i knew we had to start somewhere you know? yeah like you know somebody has to make the sacrifice you know even like the women's wct tour you know like i i felt i i think i had it bad because the prize money was so crap during during my time on tour i mean i, I won the u.s open i think um, I have pictures of me like holding up the check and it's like five thousand dollars. And yeah. now the chicks are they're they're holding up the check and it's a hundred thousand dollars. But like a generation, two generations before me, I mean, they're making five hundred dollars. Yeah. You know? Yep. Yeah, it's just I think it's that it's that um tenacity to to keep going and to uh to not give up, you know, and to believe in what you believe in and to you know, it's uh that you know, sports and sports need those types of people. You know, they 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 need those people that have that that how you grew up, right? I, I can go back to that being the tomboy that, that with worry, Andy and that Bruce, warrior, right? That like, warrior man. It, it that wasn't if it wasn't for that, then maybe you know KK gives up or mm-hmm. goes and you know, continue Does on your acting else. or your DJ yeah. stuff. You know, which I know yeah. you're a DJ. You know, maybe that takes over, but. But I think the one one thing that shines true for me is your true passion and love for yeah. surfing big waves, right? That I you always c- just had that compelling me and pull, you know, pulling me. Even even times when I would get, you know, 
can't do this. You know, I, I need to find a, like a, a real job or something because I'm just going into debt. I can't, you know, I can't keep doing this. I'm, I'm risking my life. I'm making no money. You know, this is not sustainable, but it was just always something pulling me like, no, like this is what, this is, you need, this is what you need to be doing. Like, this is your destiny. This is your path. Like don't deviate from the path. Just hang it. Yeah. In. Yeah. It's, it's uh and then, you sort of like went on a bit of a tear from there. Like then all of a sudden, you know, like the, I guess the WSL even got the, the guys had the tour, then the girls started to get the Jaws events. But I mean, in 2000, was it 2016 where you, that was the, was that the barrel that, because if we're explaining it to people listening, it's like, you know, now there's separate women's awards, but back then it was just a free for all, right? It was just like, there was maybe a woman's, overall performance was, but if you wanted to get the biggest barrel like you're competing against the men or you can yeah. everyone but you actually had a, a, a another first one of many for kk but uh you you won the biggest barrel of the year and not for women everyone but for for everyone for men women everyone it was like as and i think that well, it was, was considered it was considered a men's award right because like they had all these awards and they're like open gender but let's be real women had never even been nominated for one of those awards you know yeah. the only awards the only awards that women could have could really win uh was the female performance you yes know? and and the idea of a woman even being nominated for one of those bigger awards uh, yeah. against all the best men in the world was just like unfathomable yeah you know well that was a, that I, was a huge i remember it was a it was a massive deal and it was well well deserved no i mean no doubt you. about it and um and that actually actually rolled on to be nominated, which is pretty rad because not many people have done this either, but you actually got nominated for an ESPY in yeah. 2016 as well. So take us through that process because that's, I mean, that's the top level, level, level of all athletes get nominated for uh, the ESPYs. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that barrel that I got in 2015 and then getting nominated for barrel of the year against all the best men in the world and then beating them all and winning, I feel like that was like a domino that just tilted and started hitting the other dominoes. Cause once I got nominated, that's when the WSL announced that that next winter women were going to have, um, the PI be invited to the Piahi challenge. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then, and then that summer I got nominated for, for the SB, which I didn't win. I thought, I thought I was going to win, but you know, this one of the snowboarders won. Yeah. Um, kind of a popularity contest, way more Probably. followers than me. You yeah. Know, they get a lot more, um, Top prime time TV coverage. So. Yeah, yeah. I feel like surfing at, at the first few times that that surfers were in the ESPYs, it was more like a, hey, we'll just throw you in there because you should be in there, but you're probably not going to win. But now I, yeah. think, I think Gabrielle may have won. Um, yeah, get, yeah. So you know, I think there's definitely more. Um, they're definitely taking, it, especially now with the Olympics and you know, things like that. So, and then if we keep moving on, 2016, which is incredible was the first ever woman to be invited to the Eddie. Yeah. Which yeah, is, wow. which, which I know what, I mean, I remember when I got my first invite and I was just freaking out, but I mean, to be the first woman and to break that barrier, especially into that type of event. Like, I don't think people probably could realize how big of a thing that is. People can't, don't just don't know the gravity of what that means. Yeah. Um, if you grew up in Hawaii, it is so, the Eddie is just so ingrained in Hawaiian culture. And I remember being a little girl, you know, with Andy and Bruce guys and like, you know, the Eddie, like the, the bumper stickers, like Eddie would go. And it yeah. was just like, you know, this was just like, oh my God. And I remember being a little girl and just going like, oh, that's so cool. But like, you know, I'll never get to, to, to do that. Cause like, you know, women can't, you know, it's just, a, it's a men's event. So I'll, I'll never be able to do that. And so like when I got just out of the blue, this invite that year, I was just like, oh my God, mind blown. Like, yeah, what? <laughs> you know? And then that opened up for the, cause then the next year, um, I think the first year I got it, the first year I got invited as an alternate. Yes. And then, then the next year I got a full invitation into the event. And I think the following year, yeah, the last um, year that we had the circle was when, you know, yourself, um, Paige, Emmy, there was a um, Ju Justine, I think. There was a, a, mm -hmm. a bunch of, um, you know, and that's, you know, again, 
paving KK paving the way, right? It's it's like, hey, it can be done, and then now it's like, okay, now we we got one in, and now we can, you know, the you know, girls deserve to get more in, and you know, and it's just like it was a another another domino style effect from something that you had you had achieved. Yeah, I was a little worried, you know, when when they invited me, and then uh, you know, especially when they invited more than one female that it would get a really strong, bad reaction from the guys. Because like when people had asked me like many years before I got the first invite, like, would you ever want to do the Eddie? Like if you got invited, would you do it? And and my answer was always like, yes, but I, I don't want to be invited as like the token female. You know what I mean? Like I want to get, I want to be invited. Spot. I want to be invited on my own merits, yeah. you know, and, and I don't want to take the place of a, of a male athlete that's going to send it harder than me. Like, that's not what I want, you know? Yeah. So and that's a great, that's with- a great attitude. I think that's, I think, you know, for me as well, you know, when I it was just like, Hey, like I, you want to go out there and, and earn it. You, you, when you see yourself on that list, you want the, the boys to come up and go, Hey, give you a shake you and a hug, cuddle, yeah, a hug and go, Hey here. man, welcome (laughs) because you deserve it you've been charging for years and this and that and and um you know not like looking at you out of the corner of your eye going what who who what are you doing here yeah yeah, you know that would that wouldn't feel right you know yeah yeah um yeah that's incredible i feel like i feel like there was a little bit of that but um well i mean hey (laughs) <laughs> but they do it to they do it to each other, right? You yeah, uh, yeah, and yeah, and you you got you you've been doing that, you've been battling that your whole life, KK. So yeah. you're like, I you mean, what's thick, yeah. thick skin nothing, now? Nothing, nothing new there. Yeah, <laughs> I'd like to um transition into um what it was like actually doing those first couple of um Piahi events for the women. You know, being being on the big stage and having the having those heats and having the best girls in the world, like, and obviously being excited, you know, because the world's watching and you get, we get, you know, the girls get to show up and blow up on the, on the world stage, you know? And, um, yeah. So the first event was like 2016, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and Paige won that one. Yep. Paige is really hard to beat at Jaws. That's oh just my like God. Back it. Yeah, yeah, if, she, you, if, you, she, if you're putting your smart money on someone to probably get it done, Paige is, you're putting B- some it's money. It's Paige for the women and Billy for the men, yeah, you know, or, yeah. or, or, um, or Kyle Lenny. You know, or Ian, but, but yeah, but yeah, Paige, definitely smart money on Paige. But, uh, yeah, no, I went out and, um, I actually got injured in that first Piahi event, which was a bummer. I went out of my first heat and t- just took this really gnarly drop, uh, grabbing my rail and, and stuck it. I made it, you know, I was grabbing my rail and then, um, the, one of the ribs, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. The yeah. ribs, the Piahi yeah. ribs. So the, the, the side chop came and I had to let go of my rail to kind of like absorb it. Piali is so, 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 so hard to surf on your backhand. Oh yeah. It is so hard on your backhand. You know, it is so much easier when you're facing the wave, when you're, when you're on your backhand at jaws, you know, there's, there's sections at jaws. It's not like most big waves where, you know, it's a big drop and that's it. Like jaws has sections. Yeah. You know, and, and, um, so I, I made the drop, I had to absorb that, that, that rib. And then that's that I lost my speed when I went through that bump, but I, I thought it was okay. Cause I was looking out and I was just seeing open shoulder to the channel. I was like, oh, okay, I'm good. You know, I'm just going to like glide out of this and get a big score. And I'm stoked because my peripheral, your peripheral kind of ends around like 11 o'clock and what I couldn't see over my shoulder at about 12 o'clock was that the West bowl was just ready to drop the hammer. Yeah. And it just, I, it caught me just completely by surprise. Didn't know it was coming, exploded on the back of me, blew me forward. And my, my, my front leg just went <sighs> at the knee. Ugh. And, um, yeah, I tore my popliteus muscle completely PCL MCL. So I actually made it through the heat. Um, we couldn't have the final. Couldn't surf the. I, I watched the final from from the hospital at Maui <laughs> Memorial. You know. <laughs> oh my god! Well, what a what the, a what a crazy ride, KK. I mean, um, from that little tom tom tomboy girl like battling with Bruce and Andy to coming so close to winning a world title on a the CT to then paving the way for women's big wave surfing, winning 
a world title in 2018 and and now I've got the feeling coming out hot this year after a new hip, we may yeah. see the best KK ever, right? You might, yeah. Yeah. And then like that, that so that was the first Piahi contest. The next year, 2017 was the one I won. And um, that was when they had the biggest, cur- well, you remember, you had some gnarly wipeouts. Yeah. It was really windy. One. It was just, I don't know. It's the WSL, I feel, just jumps the gun. They see the first swell, the winner. They're like, yep, contest is on. And it's like, yo, did you see how strong the wind is going to be? Can we wait for a, like, you light know, wind day. a light wind day? Like, Jesus, you know? And it was like, it was like a huge, it turned into a toe swell by, yeah. by midday, you know? And um, we, uh, we had just won equal pay. Yeah. WSL had just announced equal pay and this was going to be the first contest that women were getting equal pay. And so I felt like this huge obligation to like justify the equal pay. Yeah. So it was the biggest, most dangerous, um, Piahi. I think any, that anybody had ever like paddled really, yeah. you know, it was, gnarly it was in nuts. The morning. It was freaking gnarly. And they sent the women out first you know, and, um, I just went out and sent it as hard as I could. You know, I, I probably could have sat on the shoulder and rode some in the, in, in, on the end and actually like made waves, but I went like just straight out to the, to the, the peak, sent it on all the sets, you know, it was so bumpy, you know, you would, you would make it halfway down the face, hit a chop and just go flying. Yeah. Um, you know, but I managed, I managed to win, thought I was going to die, got caught inside of like such a huge set at the end of the heat um had already gone through all my inflation <laughs> had no had no co2 had no leash had, had broken my leash just um gnarly 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 um but managed to win and then you know won my world title and i didn't get to enjoy my world title for more than like 24 hours before i had you know online clickbait surf publications basically saying my world title is illegitimate oh she won a world title wiping out on every wave you know yeah yeah it's brutal (laughs) yeah it's brutal but you know why you you, you've you come out the other side better for it i i hope to say and you 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 girls have done some um you know you fought for what you believed in you know and that's that's all you can do you know you can you know the girls coming up um are gonna benefit from you know, you girls fighting for what you believe in and um, what what would you, you know, in ending this podcast, what, what would you say to these young girls coming up, you know, like someone that's, that wants to be a, you know, not, not even has to be a surfer, but someone that's been in your position that, that's, um, you know, someone that wants to come up and, and be a professional athlete or be a big wave surfer, like what, what advice would you give them? Yeah, just, you just got to stick to your guns, you know. No, you know, and don't, don't set your limitations for yourself based on other people's opinions, you know, because they're going to tell you, you can't do it. You know, all throughout my career, it was just like, oh, women can't surf pipe, you know, women, women can't surf chokes, women, women can't, you know, ride big waves. They can't surf jaws. It's just like, if I would have listened to every Tom, yeah. Dick, and Harry that told me like, oh, women can't do that. And I just took it like, oh, well, I guess we can't do that. And just, you know, never tried. We're, you know, I wouldn't have yeah. accomplished even half of the things that I have in my career if I, yeah. if I would have listened, if I would have listened to, to other people. So, you know, you just got to stick with your guns and yeah. And, well, and go look, for KK, it. The, the surfing is better for you, for having you in it. It's, you know, Thank the, you. The, the women coming up for sure. You know, my daughters, if they ever decide they want to surf Jaws, hopefully not. Um, <laughs> you know, they, they can thank you for, you know, for, for paving the way and, and being a massive inspiration. And um, I look forward to seeing you in the lineup again this year. Absolutely. 100% healthy Can't and wait. sharing some yeah. waves and um, getting after yeah. it. Yeah, let's do it. Excited. All right, KK. Well, um, Kiala, thank you so much for being on The Late Drop and um, I'll see you this winter. All right. Thanks, Jamie.